All right, guys, how you doing? Welcome back to our second squad update video of the summer. This, of course, is time for the women's team. I have got our gaffer, Jason Stevens, our multiple trophy winning gaffer. Before we get into this season, Jason, let's have a quick recap on last year. Our first year since we got together, I know that AFC Bowser had played at Tier 3 before, but our first year at Tier 3 since we come under the hashtag banner, and what a year it was. You've got to be happy with it. <laughs> yeah, obviously I'd be lying if I said no. Um, yeah, it was very good, wasn't it? The start of it was amazing, but then we ended it with a couple of trophies and second place in the league, so unbelievable, really, um, yeah. in terms of first year in that league and what the group done, you know, from the coaches to the players. Yeah, it'd be hard to beat that. Yeah, I think that I think that you know from the outside looking in, anyone watching this that maybe isn't as au fait with women's football, like you only have to look at the league table and see the names of the teams that we are competing with week in week out in terms of the size of their clubs, the men's teams they have associated with them. You know, we're punching way above our weight, quite frankly. There, and then on top of that, you've got the job you've done with the budget you've had available, which I don't think gets the same sort of publicity as it does. And often we've had this with the men's team a lot. This you know, confusion because we've got all these followers. People think maybe we've got more money than we do. Or we spend more money than we do. I mean, there was an unbelievable quote coming out of Darren Ambrose last year. <laughs> it was which she seemed to think that we had a bigger budget than them, which is just mad. And, you know, obviously their setup's really good. I'm not taking anything away from them. All these beating Newcastle in the final, you know, it's unbelievable the support and the money they're putting into the women's football. It's great. But what it does is it means when teams like us beat them, it just makes it so much more special because it's equivalent. I don't know the exact comparison, but like it would be... If it was a men's Premier League comparison and, I don't know, Newcastle or Man City, us beating them in the final was was kind of like, I don't know, we played it at Luton. Was it the same as Luton beating Man City in the final? No, we obviously did better than that in the league and we did really well. But it's it's un, it's un it's, it's, it's impressive and it's unusual, I think, that you, the job you've done. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you made a good point about can we do it again? Can we keep it up? And that was very much the sort of job for us this summer, wasn't it? Rather than what do we change, it was more about how can we keep it the same? How can we make the squad have as little disruption as, as possible, hold that amazing group together. I think you're so good at getting a buy-in from players and getting them to, to believe in, you know, we're greater than some of our parts and playing for the badge and all those things. And it requires a certain type of player, doesn't it? A certain type of character. I know you're quite on top of that in terms of who you bring in, but how's the summer been for you in terms of keeping the squad together? Yeah, I mean, it had its challenges, don't get me wrong. I mean, like you said, when you have a successful season like we did, the National Cup being screened on TV. Some of our players generate a lot of interest from yeah. bigger clubs. And by the way, we're not trying to get in the way of them either. If they wanted to go, we would have been absolutely with our blessing. That's what we want. We want to push our players on to the highest level they can be. Um, but we have got something that is a little bit unique. And this togetherness that they've got, they play for each other. They play for us as a club, as, as a brand. And we managed to convince them to stay. And yeah. it wasn't like there was a hard discussion it was, if you still want me, 100%, I want to stay with this club. And, of course, we still wanted them. So the biggest challenge this season was keeping everybody that, you know, wanted to stay, so, yeah. which was really good. I think that speaks volumes, again, of, of, the, of, the, of the atmosphere you've created that people wanted to stay. Someone was talking to me recently that went to the, the Newcastle final and they were saying the, the sort of juxtaposition they saw when they saw the Newcastle coach arrive. And obviously, you know, they've got everything. They've got the full Newcastle livery coach, you know, all the all the lovely branding and you know all those sort of things that they share with the men's team resource wise and they all arrived and they came off and they almost looked like robots sent on a mission to win the game you know all perfectly full-time professional ready to win and then they saw our coach turn up and that the girls coming off getting photos and almost in that party atmosphere make no mistake when the whistle goes they change that up and they get into game mode we know that but I think we have got something special like you say we're in this weird tier which is quite hard to emulate in the men's game but in the women's game where we are playing like significant brands, if you like, football clubs, um, often professional or like hybrid models. You know, we don't have those things just yet. We're slowly moving in the right direction. But I think that's a little bit of our secret sauce is you've got these players that, are, you know, we, we sort of built it into our home kit launch this year. The fact that our players are professional, they're just professional at other things. They have other jobs that they yeah. have to balance with football. And I feel like we're absolutely operating at the highest potential capacity that that set up allows and I think you're doing a really good job. So yeah, the challenge is, can you do something similar again? Like that is by no means is me saying I expect it from you. You know that, but I don't, I wouldn't be surprised because I think that you, you, you you've done so well over the last few years that the sort of uh, evidence speaks for itself. 
As you know, in this video, we're going to go through the squad position by position, talk about players that we had last year, whether they're still with us, whether they've moved on, a couple additions to talk about as well. Obviously, some exits, there's always a bit of both. Um, so we're just going to crack on, if that's all right. And starting yeah. off with the goalkeeper spot, is there any one uh, goalkeeper to talk about? Because we only played one goalkeeper last season, Frankie Angel. What can you tell us about Frankie? <coughs> well, you know, those of you that have seen Frankie, she's been brilliant for us. Um, massive massive upgrade on what we've had previously and um you know fortunate to have frankie um again somebody that probably would have gone on to a high level but has bought into what we do the culture of the group etc and bearing in mind she lives in brighton and travels yeah. two three times a week to come up to us yeah um yeah just a phenomenal shop stopper her distribution is brilliant um still very young so still got areas of her game that she will improve naturally so Yes, the fact that we've got her behind us, what a foundation for the rest of the 100%. team. hundred percent. Couldn't, couldn't agree more, you know, and no disrespect, like you say, to the amazing goalkeepers we've had in the past, but Frankie is, is I think, the Newcastle game. Anyone watching it could see yeah. what, the role she played in that match because we did, you know, had a few chances conceded, but she was solid and it was only actually our own player that was able to score past her. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, and that's not a bad finish either. <laughs> no. um, but yeah, Frankie stays. That's fantastic news. So we've got Frankie in between the sticks. Uh, moving into the defence, so... Got a couple of ones to talk about here. Uh, one of the standout players from last year uh, was Courtney Lumley. Yeah, she's staying. Hundred percent. Yeah. Um, again, you know, both of them, Grace and Courtney, um, were a phenomenal partnership. Um, you know, Courtney got my manager's player of the year. Yep. Um, and deservedly so in some of the big performances in the big games. Um, but they've got such a good understanding together that it's probably one of the best partnerships in the national league, mm. south and north. You know, so again to have. Them two in front of Frankie gives us a good spine. 100%. Yeah, it's a really solid foundation. And it feels like they've been playing together a lot longer than they actually have, doesn't it? They just seem to fit. Yeah. And, and, and again, it's, listen, it's easy to... We identified Courtney years ago, right? We've been trying. Courtney wasn't something that just turned up. Either. No. You know, we, we were trying to get Courtney for years ago because we just see that they had a natural chemistry that would complement each other's game. Mm. Um so, yeah, sometimes you've got to look for those little bits that help each other. You know, it's not just about getting a centre-back because she's good in the air. You've got to have someone that has the understanding of the other players' games. So yeah. When they're, you know, and what they do is they know when they know each other's weaknesses. So when they're put in that situation, they're automatically covering each other, so, mm. which is fantastic. Yeah, and you probably guessed from that that we're obviously we're talking about Grace Gillard, club captain there. She's also committed. She's staying, which is fantastic. She is uh, the leading appearance maker for the women. She's only a few behind uh, leading all time which is obviously Matt, Matty Walgers on the men, probably going to be difficult for her to overtake him purely because the women play less games. But, you know, in those those 130-odd games she's played for us, I think, actually, if she starts the next game against Watford, it'll be a 100th consecutive appearance for the, the Tags, yeah. which is pretty incredible when you think about the fact that um, the one that she didn't play 100 games ago was because of a suspension. So it actually would have been a lot more than that. Yeah. Um, I mean, what does that tell you about a player in terms of consistency, in terms of just never out the side? And I think, look, first of all, you know, some players are just different breeds, right? So, you know, we've got a few of them in our squad that are just different breeds and Grace is one of them. I mean, she's a leader on and off the pitch. Um, again, you know, what she brings to the group um, in terms of her play, in terms of her character, um, you couldn't wish for a better, better pairing. Do you know what I mean? So for us, it's so important that we have people like that. But like you said, the most important thing is having that consistency in playing. Yeah. Playing. So if you've got them for 95 to 100% of the time, so you're going to do well. Yeah. Um, so we're, we're very fortunate. Um, I'm not going to touch wood because I know she's carrying an injury at the moment. Yeah. So yeah. You know, hopefully that would be all right for Sunday. Let's hope so. Yeah. First game of the season is this Sunday, by the way. We'll get round to that yeah. uh, in a second. So yeah, that, that sort of spine at the heart of the defence, Frankie, Courtney, Grace, all committed to the club, which is fantastic news. Uh, another player that's a real fan favourite, one of my favourites, also in the 100 club now in terms of appearances, Hayley West. I've got her in the defence section here. We've obviously used her further up the pitch as well, but she's sticking around, which yeah, is great. Yeah, she's very versatile, Hayley. You know, we've got her playing right back, left back, centre back when needed, centre midfield, attacking midfield, and she's even had a go up front. So when you've got somebody that's that versatile, she's very, very important to the squad. So Hayley will often play two or three positions a game, just depending yeah. on where we, we like to control the period. So if we feel like we're losing it and we need that physicality, Hayley will run through walls for you and through metal walls as well. Which you <laughs> <be>. <laughs> yeah. I've seen it. Yeah. No, quite quite a, uh, a a player and yeah, really, really happy she's with us. I think the other thing that's apparent and maybe tell me if you think this is, if this is 
common in the women's game or something unique to us is we're not just talking about players here that are like, you know, staying on from last season. We're talking about players that have been with us for quite a few seasons. In fact, pretty much since we merged and some of them even before that, like that consistency of squad, is that generally found more in the women's football, would you say? Um, it's very hard to say because I don't really analyse everyone else's squad. But if I'm just looking at the local rivals, I'd say no. Yeah. Because there seems to be a high turnaround of players every season, right? So, and I think, you know, people are... What i done when, when we first got in was look at players that are capable of playing tier three. So mm. I, we sort of like tried to target them when we was in tier four. So we knew that we had the basis to work on things. So when they got to tier three, that you'd be fine at this level. Yeah. There's no problem at all. Um, so... The fact that we managed to draw a lot of them in together four, three, four years ago um, has given us that advantage. But again, I do think as well, you've got to allow young players time to grow. And again, part of the recruitment process when three, four years ago was grabbing those 20 to 22-year-olds because three or four years together, they've still got a lot of room to grow. Mm. Right? So in theory, we've not seen the best of us yet. No. Yeah. No, and like you say, there, it's not just about the amount of time players have stayed with us, the fact that they've played with us for multiple levels. Again, many teams you see reshuffle with a promotion. We've not really ever had to do that. So Haley's staying, which is great. Another player who I've got in the defence category here, but we know we've seen her play in multiple other positions, Malika Apindia. She stays. This is great news. Oh, yeah, 100%. Um, start of the season last year, so absolutely phenomenal. Um, again, been a big player for us. She's a massive threat. All teams identify her as you know, one of our key threats. Um, so, yeah, where we play her this year, we're going to have to, um, she's going to be very flexible. Yeah. We, we, we may see a left back, you may see a left wing, you may see a centre forward, you may even see a centre midfield. So, yeah. Wow. Yeah. But she's that sort of person that can do that and you know you always get 100% with Malika, like the, the engine. You talk about being a threat, she's sort of threat both ways, isn't she? She's a real defensive weapon to stop yeah. people getting through but we know what she can do going forward and again, is. Right up there in terms of all-time charts now for the club. Goals, assists, not a million miles outside of the uh, 100 appearances either, which is amazing the short time she's been with us, really, in the grand scheme of things. So very happy about that one. Uh, we have got some defensive uh, departures to talk about. A couple that didn't play a lot last year, but maybe hadn't been addressed. So we will use this video as a chance to. But Tally Miles, who came in, I think just played one or two games. Uh, Maddie Farrand as well. They're both officially sort of moved on, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. Maddie's gone and joined the fire brigade. So it's made, you know, life balancing work and football very difficult. And mm. she lived over the, over the water. So travelling, etc. So we wish Maddie all the best. Tally, yeah, unfortunately, she came in, just wasn't quite the right fit for us. So instead of just keeping hold of her, we said, look, go and play your football somewhere else. Yeah, I respect that. And then, sort of more notable departure. did play a, a role last year, and mostly off the bench, but featured a lot and played some key key performances. Uh, Esme Lancaster, she's she's not going to be continuing. Yeah, so unfortunately, Esme, we had to be a call to be kind in that sense. Um, you know, Esme was a squad player last year, but she's a phenomenal person in and around the group. Um, you know, sometimes you can just have people around for the group because of the dynamics that they bring. And she was so important to that. But she joined us just over a year ago. Um, she had, when she joined us, she was on the recovery from an ACL. Yeah. Um, and, you know, she bounced back through that. And she, believe it or not, she had some big moments for us. Yeah. You know what I mean, some big moments. So, yeah, it, it's a shame because, again, you know, this time last year we lost Sasha, a big personality. Mm -hmm. And, you know, this time we're losing Esme, another one, big personality, two two players that will be missed. Yeah, 100%. Esme, we thank you for everything you've done in, in a hashtag shirt. Okay, let's move on to the midfield now. Uh, another person in the 100 club and been around the club a long time, pre-merger as well, Gemma Baker, formerly known as Gemma Abella, still with us. Yeah, glue boot, still with us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And glue boot, uh, you know, she controls that ball from anywhere. She does. Technically, she's probably one of our best players, you know, so to have someone like that who can just see things and move the ball about just enables the rest of the team to flow. So, Really pleased because obviously Jamie had a baby last, yeah. the year before last, and she, you know, confidence wise, she wasn't too sure whether or not she could cut it at tier three because she missed the whole tier four campaign. More than able, you know, fitted in easily. And then this year, obviously, by balancing work and babies and everything else that comes with it, but she's going to give it one more season. So I'm really I pleased. love it. Mm. I'm really happy about that. And yeah, it's such an incredible, I mean, that in the time that she had that baby, we went up a level. So yeah. she not, it wasn't even just a case of coming back where you left <coughs> off. It was coming back higher where you left off. So much respect for that. And then to come back in a year that was so, you know, effective. We, we, we've won two cups. We've come second in the league. Like, serious kudos to Gemma Baker. And, you know, she would have earned the right to pack it in at any point. But she's still going and she's still playing at that level. I'm so happy about that. So 
really good news. Um, this player is down as a midfielder. We've sort of seen her morph into a midfielder of late, but has played other positions. Sophie Bajan is still with us. That's very, very good news. Oh, 100%. <clears throat> we saw Sophie play against us. You know, she wasn't with us at the beginning of last season. Yeah. So we sort of required her about November time. Um, yeah, predominantly as a centre-back when she was playing against us and when she wanted to come over. Um, I did sort of tell her a little lie saying that she was going to play centre-back first, but you know, I got over her. I wanted to convert her straight away to a CDM. And she's taken a bit of time, but now she's mastered that position. She's probably... I think going to be the player to watch this season. Interesting. Yeah. How how has she found that in terms of like does she want to move up the pitch when she was given the opportunity? It's a very different position to play. I remember when I I was always a centre back, and then you first start playing in centre mid, you have to be able to see everywhere. And as a centre back, you don't because you just look in front of you. So it's a yeah. massive adjustment. But she's taken it to like a duck to water, isn't she? Well, listen, I think every coach will look at players and they see different things, right? And I just see straight away she had that three sixty vision. So yeah. even though she was playing centre back, she was wasted. Um, because not many players in centre midfield have that 360 vision. Mm. So when you can see the way that she scans the pitch and just takes in information, you knew that she was in the wrong position. So, yeah, I mean, obviously she's been trained as a centre back all her life when she was at Reading and, and stuff like that. So she probably feels like she was a centre back. Um, but now she's come to me and it's like, sorry. It's what you do, isn't it? You yeah, just change, change, change everyone. Yeah. Most people change positions at some point under you. But yeah. been, listen, you can't argue with it. It's been effective. Yeah. She's been putting in some unbelievable performances continued working so hard in the off season fitness wise, oh. like she's really on that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, we did some, some sort of fitness tests recently, which we were going to post on the channel as soon as we can. But um, she was outperforming a lot of the men on and that stuff, which, you know, I, I don't say in any sort of patronizing way, you know, people that are physically bigger than her, but she's just got that, that sort of work rate, I guess, in her. She just wants to be the best she can be. You can tell on the pitch, can't you? Yeah. She's like Hayley Mark too. Yeah. You know, yeah. The, she, wrote, she averages about 103 tackles a game. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's not an exaggeration either. No, so, she, yeah. yeah it, it's, you see that she gets really into the tackles as well yeah. and sometimes you worry a little bit about her, but she always gets back up Oh, again. yeah, yeah. If, if Soph doesn't spend at least two or three times on the floor with a physio, then we're worried that she's not on her game. Yeah. <laughs> that's part of the game. Well, brilliant that Sophie's staying. Another player that's played both midfield and defence for us, uh, Jade Keogh. She's staying with us? Yeah, Jade's staying with us. I mean, again, versatile player, can play as a, as a centre-back, can play as a full-back, can play as a midfielder, you know, defensive and attacking. So again, that versatility is so important, you know, especially, yeah, it's important these days. You can't really have players that just play one position, apart from a goalkeeper. Um, give me time. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so Jade's very versatile, very good. Experienced, and we need that. We always need that. So, yeah. Yeah. You know, and also to her, you know, she she missed, she didn't miss, she, she was she was in and out the starting lineup last year, wasn't she? she? She had a good amount of starts. She had a lot of appearances off the bench as well. Yeah. And it's one of them, you do wonder, are they going to like look for more football? But she's bought into the project. She's bought into the role that she can play in the project. You know, obviously things are always changing positionally and things and opportunities are going to arise. But again, I think it speaks volumes for, for the, the setup you've created that she wants to stay with us. And I think it's also, you know, I'd say that we're quite honest as a, a coach. We don't tell them lies. Yeah. You know, I like to think that I make it quite clear from day one, this is your role, whether you're 1 to 11, 12 to 16. You know, the players that we tend to keep a fixed spine, but the rest of it is fluid, you know, on that side. So I won't promise them something that I can't do. Yeah, yeah, that's fair. Um, so three more players we're going to mention quickly here that are staying, which is great. Um, well, we've got... Kelly Bal Balfour, who again came in what midway through last season, yeah, um, had a few injuries and things, but we saw her mostly off the bench. She's she's still with us. Yeah, so Kelly's got proven pedigree at tier two level. Um, she came and joined us again on a recovery from a big injury, um, and she just needed the rest of that season to to get back into the rhythm. Mm. And we've seen her pre season, and yeah, she's ready to go. And we're going to see uh, a massive improvement on the Kelly that we saw last year. Okay, but that's just her. Uh, true ability so yeah. you know you're going to see a really see you're going to see the player that attracted tier two clubs or almost like a new signing in a way yeah yeah 100 percent. you know 100 percent. she's so composed on the ball she her, re, her retention rate is really good really awesome good. that's really good to hear uh, another player who was really involved in our reserve setup last year but did get a handful of appearances played in the fa cup for us against norwich as, as well as a few other times uh still involved in the setup as well which is uh tory Keane. yeah one of the youngsters in the reserves you know, it's important that they experience first team football as and when they can. But, you know, she's still developing that consistency. Um, but with the reserves again this year. Um, so, again, we'll monitor that and bring her up and as and when, really. 
And if we're talking about young players that had standout performances last year, this player won Young Player of the Year last year. Uh, Macy Nichols obviously was on a, a dual registration from uh, from West Ham last year, and um, you know had a, an incredible year. Grew and grew and grew as the year went by. Scored a goal in that massive final against Newcastle. She spent all the preseason with us. What's the plan with Macy? Yeah, we're hoping to keep Macy again. Um, obviously, what we don't want to do is hinder hinder her progress, right? Yeah. So, obviously, we still got to have that dialogue with the club to see what her their plans are for her. Obviously, the, the Super League clubs, they've still got another month of their pre-season yet. We uh, restart now. And then the Championship start a couple of weeks later. And then, obviously, they start a few weeks after that. So, in terms of their preparation, they've still got some thinking to do. And I think Macy's involvement will depend on what signings they get and where they they see her development now. Indications are that she will be with us, but we'll never take anything for granted. Yeah, but we know what she can do. Oh, and obviously, I mean, only going to get better as well. Yes. Yeah, I mean, you think that she joined us as a 16 year old, just turned 17, you know, at the end of last season. Yeah. She's um, a massive talent. She grew into the, the team and you know, had some big goals, right? Big goals against Huge rugby, goals. big goals against Portsmouth, big goal in the Newcastle Cup final. She just scores big goals. Big goal. goals, good goals, yeah. you know, and so composed for someone of her age. I think genuinely got a really bright future and yeah if we can see more of her in a hashtag shirt we'll definitely benefit from it no doubt about it yeah, 100%. another player who played a key role last year didn't start the season with us but came in and was big especially in those moments when we needed her was Vicky Franck obviously a uh, hat trick in the final against Bidariki including the third goal which was well goal of the season voted goal of the season and I thought yeah incredible a really big fan of this player what's going on with Vicky yeah so Vicky a little Polish wizard she's um will be with us. Um, again, one of these players that has to balance work and football, etc. So, you know, we're quite understanding. She's just sorting out her work stuff and then she'll be with us once the season starts. But she's also set herself a little challenge to do an Ironman. Right. Yeah, so, so, fair play to you. Yeah. And I, and <laughs> um, she, I think she went on a silent retreat as well a few weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. Quite obviously, she, she took part in a friendly last week and she was telling the girls about this silent retreat. Lots of um, yeah, mental um, development, etc. So, yeah, and that's so interesting because Nathan Smith on the men's team side also did something similar in India, I believe, a few years ago. So you're seeing a bit more of this uh, this well-being and wellness come into the, the game, which I think is a good thing. You know, go back 10, 20, 30 years when all the lads were in the pub before games and things. It feels like the the footballing kind of culture is changing a little bit, doesn't it? Uh, absolutely. You know, I, I, I've experienced something similar myself, but that's another podcast. Okay, we'll video. talk about that. Yeah, <laughs> but it is um, it is challenging. It's challenging, those type of things. So fair play to her that she put herself through it. And uh, she's got some stories for that one. 100%. Mm. So a couple uh, bigger exits to talk about here in the midfield section. There's a couple I'm just going to go through quite quickly. There's no disrespect to the players. It's maybe that they didn't play much last year or they actually left quite a while ago. But Alina Saulo, Maisie Garwood, who obviously played a, a big role in the year before last. Um, Charlotte Cresswell, uh, May Lawful. Uh, they've all moved on, is that right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pretty much moved on. Different reasons. Um, Elena was um, on a... She was over from Finland doing yeah. some studying. Macy wanted to play regular football. Um, Charlotte, the same regular football. And May, she was another one from the reserves, but she's now going to a lower level football. Yeah. So. Right, got it. And then Cara Forjaw had that bad injury, didn't she, last yeah. year? So her ankle, I think it was. Basically yes. ended the season for her. And I see it. Cara was, again, one of those players that was, you know, in the 13, she was always in about starting, not coming off the bench, etc. And she picked up, when she, when she was just getting into that flow, she yeah. just picked up an injury, took her out for the whole season. Um, and I think she's just assessed her game and she's going to be playing for our rivals this year. Yes, yeah, so you got to Billericke, I believe. Yeah. So we, we almost certainly will see her again It'll just be in the, when we play against her. Sophie Kelly, we did obviously talk about this one when it happened at the end of the season. We, we announced it in the 100 Club. Big player over the last few years, pre-merger, post-merger. The Kelly family is obviously super involved in the club as well, but she has decided uh, to, to actually stop playing at all. Taking a break at the moment. Yeah. I mean, I've had Sophie ever since she was like 14. So when we were at West Ham and then she sort of followed me all the way through. She's just a steady, reliable player. I put a lot on her and she's probably thought, oh, I need a break from you, Joyce. So. <laughs> <laughs> she's played a lot of football. Yeah. She, you know, like I say, in the 100 appearances now and uh, steady player. Like never, You always got a solid performance out yeah. of Sophie. It was amazing when I looked back on her stats and she only ever actually got one player of the match award and it was in that semi-final against Halifax, yeah. National League Cup semi-final. Really important performance on, on a terrible pitch. And um, But it amazed me that stat because there's so many good games. It's just maybe she didn't take the, the headlines. And that's, that's, I mean, that's what football is, though. People like the glory goals, aren't they? They like the magical pass. What Sophie is so good at is just 
making it tick over. So pick up a ball, five yards, move it quick, move it quick. And she doesn't take, doesn't dwell on the ball, just moves it. And she's got such good awareness, she can switch the ball from one side to the other, mm. but just simple. And that goes amiss because it's not sexy, right? So it's just effective and makes us efficient. She, you know, she's been a key part making us tick. So yeah, absolutely. You know, we're gutted that we lost her. Um, but hopefully she'll be back one day in, in the tag shirt. She's very young still. She's only like 23. So yeah. I expect that she won't give up football um, forever. It's just at the moment a well-deserved break. Yeah, I think that's right. I think, you know, the amount of, she'd been playing since a young age, you know, every weekend, it's a big commitment, particularly at this level. So completely right. I always respect players, players own, own right to sort of put their life first and do what they want to do. But I do think, I said to Sophie when I spoke to her about it after the awards is, you know, one day you have to stop playing. So have a break now. But if you ever come back, hopefully for us, maybe for someone else, like enjoy it. Because I'm getting to the point now where in my head I should still be playing, but my knee doesn't allow it anymore. <laughs> and I like, I want to play, but I can't. And I think it's a waste. It's a, it's a waste of the game because she's so good at it. She put all that time in. You've acquired these skills. If you're enjoying it and it works for you, then the, the game's better off to see Sophie Kelly play, and that's for sure. Yeah, um, another player who sort of fell in that, that category a little bit mid last year was Phoebe Williams. Obviously, she came in. Massive addition for us. Part of that that early season success where we took on all the big teams and basically beat them all. Um, she was at the heart of the midfield for it. You know, came from a, a really good pedigree. Sort of around Christmas time, stopped playing for a little bit. Wasn't particularly enjoying it. But you have to give her a huge credit because she came back to help us in that National League final. Played a huge role in it. Scored the winner. Got a bloody nose for the, uh, you know, for, for as a thank you. She's back playing football again, which is really good news. I'm really happy for her she's playing, but she, she's not going to be continuing with us. No, I mean, let's put it into context. She lives in Southampton, right? So anyone that comes around the M25 knows that's an absolute nightmare journey. So we applaud her for the effort that she made. But she was also studying a master's at the time as well. Yeah, that's so, right. You know, between getting that commitment to football, um, yeah, she needed to prioritise her studies. So it was about, I think, the middle of October, November that she paused playing yeah. football for us and then... We put out the big SOS for the um, cup final and then she come back and delivered. We had so many injuries. We, I know, at one stage, we didn't even have 12. No, I remember, squad, right? yeah, so it's crazy. We had to appeal so many different angles, etc. But she come back for that final, you know, come on, and then what a contribution, right? So, And it was her birthday. It was her birthday, so of course. It was, it was her birthday, so she scores the winning goal and gets a broken nose. What? better present it was like a movie script and still had to buy the cakes so that's just the way it goes <laughs> yeah I mean if that's your swan song in a hashtag shirt then I think it's a pretty good one isn't it yeah. and uh, she signed for Bournemouth by the way who's tier below us which in my opinion is a tier too low or two tiers too low probably for Phoebe mm. where she could be playing oh, yeah, yeah. but very close to home and an ambitious project that she's part of so I can see the reasons why she's gone there but we wish you the best Phoebe another player's name you might recognise there is uh, Eva Carvalho she has had two ACL injuries now, but she's on the comeback. She actually played in uh, a preseason game the other day, so delighted to see her return to fitness and uh, yeah, keep an eye out on that one. As we move into the attack section now, where the where the goals are scored, Sammy Rowland has been a big goal scorer for the last couple of years for us. She stays. Yeah, Sammy, um, still enthusiastic. Yeah, been working hard in preseason. You know, she's energies are. Yeah, just really pleased to have her. She's one of the top strikers in that league. Um, you know, it's not just about the goals. It's you know, it's the contributions that she makes mm. to to the build up to the play and her work rate off the ball. And again, if we go back to that Newcastle game cup final, her work rate. I mean, she, I think she earned man of the match performance there. Yeah. And again, her work rate off the ball was of another level. And the know. work to get to for Phoebe's goal down yeah, that right just, side. Cut and it she's in. got that that tenacity. She never gives up. And she's got worldies in her, and she's got tappings. So all round, which is, yeah, we're grateful to keep. Yeah, and a couple goals this year, decent decent goal scoring form. She could be right up there, all-time goal scorers at the club, men and women. Yeah, She's she really will. close. Yeah, she will be. Yeah. Um, another player who uh, I was classed as an attacker, uh, Georgia Griffin, Gigi. Um, missed a bit of football last year, had an early injury, didn't she? she took yeah. a wind out of her sails a little bit, but then she came back and she returned to the goal scoring form that she'd picked up before. Big player, she stays. Yeah, again, number one that's versatile. Lovely left foot. Um, an engine to die for, um, one of our speed merchants. Mm. Um, yeah, again, big goals and big games, right? Um, beat Portsmouth 1 0 that moment when she went bursting through. Yeah, in. that was the first goal for the club, wasn't it? Yeah, it was yeah. the first goal for a club. What a goal to score. Um, yeah, big ankle injury that took her out for about 12, 14 weeks. 
Um, she's back now. She's firing. So hopefully we'll get a, a GG Mark II. Yeah, mm. definitely. And then speaking of injuries, obviously, uh, you guys probably will know the injury that Emma Samways uh, sustained last year, ACL. Um, leading assist maker in club history, men and women, no one has provided more goals for this team in any team hashtag united ever than emma samways uh you guys helped with this a lot which was really good we raised some money for her didn't we to help obviously she's had to put her hand in her pocket as well so shout out to emma samways for getting that operation done um it's successful is what i'm being told she's actually doing really good in the rehab you know you can't rush these things can you but everything that we can gauge from an aco operation is positive so far we hope to see her play some role this year 100 percent. yeah yeah i mean emma will tell you she's ready now but we've just got to <laughs> calm her down a bit um, but yeah, look, the op went well, the post-op, you know, the, the, the six weeks afterwards have gone well. Um, she's close to a return to running again, okay. so, which is really good. Yeah. And if that does happen in the next week or two, then maybe we'll see her just after Christmas. Which would be amazing. You know, yeah. usually with ACLs, you've you got a certain layoff, which is a minimum of like eight to nine, ten months. But then anything can happen after that. You can have huge setbacks. You only have to look at Fryce and Garno for the men's team. It really took him more than two years to come back from that ACL. Um, you know, so we don't want to get people's hopes up and say she'll definitely be back after Christmas. So I said this to Emma herself, like keep doing what you're doing, keep positive, keep smashing all your targets, but don't expect yourself to come back exactly where you left off. It takes a while. Yeah, it? and that's it. And that's the, our job. Right? Yeah. So we make sure we look after her right and we're liaising with the right people. She's under good care. Um, so yeah, we're, no expectations from us. But if everything does go continue to plan, then you will see it before the end of the season, without a doubt. Yeah. But let's we'll take it one step at a time because anything can happen, as you said. 100%. We talked about people that scored a lot of goals for the club. Kelly Welford, we didn't see her last year, but we didn't know exactly what was going on this time last year. Um, obviously scored a, a crazy amount of goals for this club, pre-merger, post-merger. Such a such a good striker for me. I always enjoyed watching her because she's when I've been watching her, she's always been playing with some sort of injury really as well, hasn't she? And she's still kept that tally up. Is there any latest on her? I heard rumours she might be coming back to football some recently, I think. I can't remember who um, from. but Yeah, I mean, obviously injuries got the better of Kel. I mean, she had those um, compartment syndromes yeah. and that just affected her uh, game and, me I say mental capacity, but it was just very hard for her to navigate 90 minutes. But going back, yeah, she's probably the most natural finisher I've come across in my time at women's football. She was brilliant. And in terms of, I think she's playing local level football at okay. the moment. Um, and I think that's just... To enjoyment, I don't think there's any desire to come back. Fair. Um, but if she did, you know, Kel, you come to us first. A hundred percent. And I pity Again, only 23. Only 23. Exactly. So yeah. young. And I, I honestly feel for the defenders going up against her in whatever yeah. league it is. Well, because yeah. they're, they're in for a hor horrible time. Um, before we get on to exits, there's been a couple other players, obviously, that are featured over pre-season. There's obviously still a few to, you know, assess and see them in competitive environments and things. So it's not that's not a definitive list of everyone that's maybe featured in pre-season. These are the players that we know are committed and essentially these are players that played for us last year as well and talking about who stayed on. Um, one player that played for us last year, back end of last year, but did play a pivotal role, played a big role actually in the two cup final wins. You have to say in both finals was important. Is Valentine Percy, who yeah. isn't staying with us. No, Valentine has uh, um, got a better offer and went to Billericay, basically. Um, you know, as we've, we've said many times, our club's not built about money and um, people that only want to play for money, I, I, I get it. It's, you know, you've got to earn a living, etc. But we couldn't, unfortunately, match that. So, yeah, we'll play against her very soon. We will. We'll play, yeah, very soon, indeed. Yeah. And I think yeah, it's important to add context to that, which is... You know, this level, you, you've got players that are working, you've got players that maybe aren't working, but are getting their money from football and, it, and, and it's not always enough or a lot of money. So I've always said, if someone gets a good offer from somewhere and it's better than we're prepared to offer, like, then I completely respect their right to take that. Of course you do. There's no, there's no other response possible. Um, it's an interesting one with Valentine though, obviously, because she's also not from local. She travels up right from the South Coast. Yeah. So um, it's interesting that she's gone to Billericay because I, I think from a, from a club perspective, they've just seen what she did to them in the final yeah. and gone, we'd like her, please, and sort of paid whatever it costs, which is your right to do. It's not really the way we do things, as you know. Yeah. We, we tend to try and build a squad in a slightly different way. But yeah, we wish her the best apart from when she's playing against us, of course. Yeah, she's a great player and she's a good personality. Yeah, you know, she they, is. They've got themselves a good player there. Yeah, we'll see how we get on against them, of course. Always a, a feisty one. We have saved one, I'd say, big addition, actually, uh, to the club that has been announced on social media. So if you're a big fan, you would have seen this one in the last 24 hours or so. Really happy about this one. I, I, when this, this player played for us before, and when she left, I always felt there was unfinished business. I always felt, you know, she was ambitious and um, 
if she achieved her goals and she probably in that in that initial period, she probably wouldn't have come back to us necessarily because she might have gone a little bit higher. Things didn't necessarily go that way. She obviously went for Billericay, then she went to Ipswich and then she spent some time in Chatham uh, loan uh, at the back end of last year. The player I'm talking about, obviously, is Holly Turner, which we're super happy to have back. We were tier four when she played for us last time. Yeah. She always went to, and again, talking about respecting players' uh, right to do what they want, she had the opportunity to play a higher level. And I always think, certainly when it's talking about levels, you can't hold players back. So she she she, she left to Billericay. Hasn't, would you say it's fair to say in terms of, those last couple of seasons, obviously she's coming off the back of the ACL injury, but hasn't quite transpired the way she probably would have wanted it to. Yeah. I mean, just people probably don't realize, or some of you do, that she's my stepdaughter. Right? Yeah. So um, in terms of, she's always wanted to play the highest level she could be. Um, and no doubt the injury did set her back. Um, and then, you know, certain players, they've got to have certain people around them in order to, to make them excel to the levels that they're capable of. And, and I, I feel like, as a, as a dad's perspective here, rather than a coach, I feel like she wasn't probably understood mm. at those clubs. Right. Um, and Billy Ricky, she probably, you know, fitted in more there. But again, it was quite a defensive setup. So you didn't really get the best out of her on there. And Ipswich, again, they had their main centre forward. So she probably wasn't given the chance. But they, you know, she loved the environment at Ipswich. She yeah. loved the girls there. She loved the setup. You know, Joe's a great coach. And her game you know, has made some improvements, but now she's come back to us. So I think she feels like we can get the best out of her. So delighted to have her back. Absolutely delighted. She's a physical specimen. Um, she will score important goals. And again, so much versatility to her game. Um, yeah, well, I mean, she went to Chatham, as you said, at the second half of the season. That wasn't because we wasn't in for her. We did try. Yeah, we did, yeah. But then uh, obviously Ipswich were like, no, not to our rivals. We was above them in the league. So it made sense for them to let her go to play some games at Chatham and we're grateful because it's given her that you know that extra 10 12 games that she probably needed in yeah. order to to get back and yeah now she's you know she's close to firing now she's yeah close and to firing. some of you might have been eagle-eyed and seen that she's featured for us throughout pre-season as well so she's had that extra bit of football as well yeah. but yeah now it is signed and she is with us as a player which is fantastic to see and I know when she when she met, left and went to Billy Ricky I mean we had a conversation and I, I was always at like I would with most players, but because of the role she'd played for us prior, she scored a lot of important goals. I always said that the doors never close and you never know what's going to happen in the future. I always felt there was a chance she'd come back to us. And I think you know, it's, it's maybe these other, other other clubs losses our gain and she can get back to her best football one under you again. And I think that I'm really excited for that one. So really to sum up the video, and by the way, there may be one other signing. Well, there will be one other signing actually. I'm working hard on it as we speak to be announced very soon. Not going to talk about it in this video, but there is one more. So if you felt, I don't think you should feel underwhelmed because we've done not a lot of business in terms of incoming. I think the business has been retention. I talk about this a lot when I do like my Premier League uh, transfer window reviews. It's a club like Liverpool, who I know you support, is a great example, right? They've done no business this year so far whatsoever. Uh, even when Jurgen Klopp was still there, they often would just buy one, two players. But you don't necessarily need to bring in 10 players. You don't need to be Chelsea every year if you've got a good foundation. I think that the lack of incomings speaks more volumes as to how solid the, the foundation you've built is. And what the best business we've done this year is just maintaining the vast majority of that squad. And that starting 11 is pretty much intact, dare I say, slightly improved this year. Um, and we've still got maybe, well, we've got one more big addition to talk about in a future future video. So, um yeah, like it's, it's it's little improvements, little yeah. honings, and players getting better as well. You know, young yeah. players improving. So and I think that's the important thing to to repeat. There is, um, I didn't want massive changes. No. season. and it, listen, I'm not naive to understand that you still need to refresh the squad up with one or two. But again, it's that quality aspect. What's out there that's going to improve us? Yeah, Holly's going to improve us. The player that we're talking about is going to improve us. Mm. Right. So, are we going to be a stronger group? A hundred percent. And you also got some got, players that didn't start the season for us last year. We didn't start with well, Sophie exactly. B, did so we? I was just about to say, you yeah, know, you've got players that haven't had a full season with us yet. So, yeah, yeah, so I'm, yeah I'm really, I'm excited. So I'm excited. Know. And one thing about women's football is it, it is not standing still. It is developing at a, a crazy rate, right? So just like any season of any league in, in football, you expect your competitors to improve and get better. With women's football, the amount of money coming into it in other clubs is going up and up and up and up. So there's no doubt about it. For us to like maintain 
what we did last year and what we've done over the last few years is we have to keep investing and keep improving ourselves just to keep a pace with it, right? Because it's it's great, objectively, for the women's game, all this money coming into it and, and the men's teams that are taking it serious. You've only got to look at huge, like Premier League men's teams that still have teams quite a far way beneath us. And you've got like, uh, Bournemouth and Norwich and Fulham and all these guys are one or two tiers below us still. I expect that all to change in the next few years. But because of the one promotion system, one per league, it will take a little bit of time. So... We, our job for me my job I guess off, off the pitch is to, to allow us to keep rubbing shoulders with these clubs that essentially have much bigger pockets than we do and uh, and keep sort of you know we talked about the National League win having the word hashtag United alongside you know Arsenal's and the huge names Tottenham and you know, huge huge football brand names on the trophy with the word hashtag United etched into it if we can get that a few more times yeah. it'll be quite it's nice it's not going to change is it? go, this is the beast here yeah. that's the trophy and then at the bottom you just see you're um, never going to take our name off that now no it's on there forever yeah. the question is can we add a few more so <laughs> watch this space first game of the season is this Sunday it might even be today as you're watching this uh, Watford at home newly relegated Watford from the championship once again the fixture gods have given us a fairly difficult start to the season haven't they <laughs> yeah <laughs> Some would say it's a little bit cynical, but no, listen, yeah, I prefer it that way. You know, that's not just tongue in cheek. I do because when teams go through such a massive change, it takes them probably five or six games to get up to speed. So I would rather play them at the beginning of the season. Um, it's a little bit more level then. Um, but as you said, Watford have come down from the championship. They've gone for a big change themselves. Then we've got Ipswich, who we yep. know that they've upped their game. They've gone more professional, already a great team. Um, you know, see what they've got. They've signed some really big players, exactly. And then, yeah, local rivals as game number three. So, yeah, I'm looking forward to the start. We've got a bit of history of Watford two years ago, National League Cup. I think it might have been quarterfinal or round before the quarterfinal. No, it, I think it was around before the quarterfinal. Yeah, round before the yeah. quarterfinal. It was, a, it was during that snowy period. So we played yeah. on the indoor pitch at Watford's training ground. And we we were tier below we were tier below them at the time because they were in their promotion campaign from yeah. tier three. Took them to extra time, 3-3. Free, free, ended up losing 5-3. But it was a great game. Some really good goals. Sammy Rowland scored a couple, I think. Yeah. Sensational. And um, but really spirited fight back from our girls as well. And that was one of the first times I saw us really, you know, we've done it a few times in the National League Cup over the last few years, uh, especially, but really sort of show that we can compete with teams at a high level. Yeah, I think we've got a great mentality. Right? Um, when people look at us, they see an attacking, aggressive style. They see a physical team. Um, but you also see a team that knows how to win. Right? So we were 3-1 down in that game as well. I remember, yeah, I remember. We pulled it back. Another day, we would have nicked that, but yeah. it wasn't to be. And I think the the difference in the quality of depth of squad won that day. Yeah, um, yeah. And you can't win the National League Cup every year necessarily. No. You know, we can't be greedy. <laughs> but um, it was a good foundation to go and win it the next year. But that is it for our update video. If you have any women's specific questions, feel free to leave them in the comments below. We have got some plans to get more women's content to you, these guys, particularly across our socials. So stay tuned for that. And as I've alluded to, a huge announcement still to come so keep your eyes peeled let us know in the comments where you think hashtag united women will come in the women's national league south this season and we'll see you very soon in fact again if you're watching on sunday there is a live stream on the main channel for members only so if you're not a member become a member five pound a month you get women's games you get men's games when we can stream them you get reserve games you get lots of little posts written by me for the members and it helps the club of course so if you're a member today on the sunday and you're watching this you can watch that game we just talked about. Hashtag versus Watford live. We'll see you there. Up the tags.